Hey everyone, Brad from RoboFlow here. I hope you all enjoyed last week's tutorial where I showed you how to use a video and your trained computer vision model to get predictions on a sequence of frames and create a really cool visualization of its output. This week we're going to stick with that video motif and I'm going to show you how to take data in the opposite direction. How to import a video, slice it into frames, annotate it, and then use it to train a computer vision model versus using the output of a computer vision model on a video. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's see what we're dealing with here. I went to the aquarium and I shot a whole bunch of videos with my iPhone. Here's one of them. This is the video that we're gonna use as our example today. So you can see there's a bunch of fish swimming in one direction and some sharks swimming in the other direction. Um, but this is a, a typical video, right? Uh, each frame is uh, very similar to the previous one, just with a, a little bit of movement and a little bit of change. So without further ado, let's jump in and create a project in RoboFlow. I'm going to call this aquarium and the things that I'm labeling are the animals. Once I create the project, I'll get a drop zone and you can see that I can add images, annotations, or with RoboFlow Pro, video. And that's what we're going to do here today. So I'll drop in that video that we just had a look at and RoboFlow will ask me how often I want to sample the frames from this video. Now our computer vision model isn't actually going to know that it's getting input from a video. It's still just going to see individual images when it's training. The secret is we're going to extract those as frames from the video. So to do that, we need to know how often we want to take a frame from the video and RoboFlow is going to help us do that. So you can see if I go up to something like 30 frames uh, per second, my 13 second video is going to turn to 386 images. If I take it down to maybe one frame per second, I'll get 13 images for that uh, 13 second video. Um, I think for our purposes, let's go more around two frames per second. We'll get 26 images from that 13 second video. That seems about right. So when I select choose frame rate, then RoboFlow is going to crank through that video, uh, essentially watch it in accelerated speed and uh, take a screenshot of the video at various points in time. Um, twice a second in, in our case, um, and then it's going to process those out, uh, and we're going to see those just like we would images uh, if we had uploaded individual images. So I'll go ahead and click uh, Finish Processing, select the default splits uh, for a train valid and test, which our model is going to use um, when it's training uh, to calculate our metrics. And then you can see now I'm on this Annotate tab, uh, and I have all my images here. So if I go ahead and uh, click that guy, um, I get a picture. And if I scroll through, um, I can see that these fish are swimming across with the sharks as well. Um, and now one thing that you'll probably notice is if I was going to annotate each one of these by themselves, uh, there'd be a lot of duplicated work. Um, so these fish are uh, in every frame, um, but I would have to draw a box around each one individually. Um, so I'm gonna do the setup and do that once, and then I'm gonna show you how to use a new tool in RoboFlow that makes video annotation specifically a lot easier and quicker. Um, and it uses that observation that in videos, the same objects are gonna be um, basically in the same place, uh, just either translated or scaled a little bit um, for each image. So I'll go through here and continue labeling all of these fish. Um, and I'll only have to do this once, uh, and then I'll show you how we can use RoboFlow to not have to do this for the next frame. So I've got all my fish. Let's do the sharks. If you're annotating your own data set, uh, you would want to be careful about making these boxes super tight, but just for um, Demonstration purposes, um, I wasn't too careful here. Um, okay, so I go to this next frame, and instead of drawing all those boxes, let's use the repeat previous tool to just copy those over. And so now I can just move those over as much as the fish swam. I can resize them a little bit if they're, if they're off. Um, it looks like this one I'll need to resize because that shark is still coming onto the frame. That one swam away a little bit. That one swam a little closer. So you can see this is going to speed up the price process quite a bit. Now let's 
next look at a different tool that we have in RoboFlow that could also speed up this process, probably by a factor of two, maybe three, or potentially even higher, depending uh, on how good our computer vision models have gotten. Um, so I'll go to this next frame, and then we're going to use a tool called Label Assist. So with Label Assist, we can use an existing computer vision model to pre-annotate an image and give us predictions. And then instead of having to start from scratch labeling our images, we can uh, go ahead and just correct our model's mistakes. And this gives us tremendous leverage. It means we don't have to be teaching our model about things it already knows about. We can just be correcting it when it's wrong and fixing its mistakes and help it learn that much quicker. Um, so here if I go to Label Assist, I, we can see that I have a couple of options. So my account has already trained a custom fish model, which we're going to use in a second. But there's also public models uh, that RoboFlow has pre-trained and uh, kind of released to the world for you. Right now, uh, the most common one that you'll want to use is called Coco. Uh, and this uses uh, a sequence of common objects. If I select Go, this will load the model up into my web browser and let me select which ones of those I want to use. Unfortunately, Coco doesn't have a fish or a shark class, but if you are labeling, let's say, horses or cows or bears um, or scissors or basically any common household object, people, um, Coco might be a good place to start. Unfortunately for us, we're labeling fish. Coco doesn't have fish. And so that's where the custom model comes in. So if instead of selecting Coco, I select my aquarium model, uh, and click continue, we'll see what classes are available in that past model that I had trained. So if you've watched one of our other videos, I showed actually how I trained this model uh, using RoboFlow Train, um, and it was actually on a, a, the same day's worth of photos that I took at the aquarium, um, but it had some stuff that we don't need. So let's go ahead and uncheck everything besides the fish and the sharks, uh, because we only want those predictions. We know that this video that we're labeling only has those two classes. So if I select those two classes, Label Assist is good to go, and the model will make predictions. Uh, and so then I just need to correct it. So it looks like my model missed this shark here. So I'll just go ahead and add that. And it missed a fish here. And when I'm adding these predictions, uh, it's teaching my model new things. So next time I train my model, um, it shouldn't miss those two things either. So if I go to the next image, it will give me the predictions from the model. This one actually looks pretty good, just missed one fish down here. Do that. Looks like it got some of these reflections as fish and sharks, which I don't want. Uh, then I can go to the next one. Uh, and so another tool that I have at my disposal here is the confidence selector. So by default, it's giving me things that my model is at least 50% confident of. If I want more bounding boxes, I can reduce the confidence. So let's say uh, it wasn't predicting as many of the objects as I wanted to see. Let's go down to 10%. And so now you can see on this one, it got more of the reflections uh, because it, it thought maybe those were fish, but, but not quite, quite. And if it was over predicting, if it, if it was giving me a bunch of these reflections at 50%, I could go up higher. So let's see what the model is 90% sure of. So there you can see it wasn't as sure of these, these fish and those sharks, um, and so it, it's not outputting them with 90% confidence. It's somewhere between 50 and 90% on those. So if we go back to 50%, let's see, that actually looked, looked pretty good. Um, so then I can continue through these images, and I want to look and, and see other things that it missed. So here's a, here's a shark. Here's a fish that it missed. Oops. Looks like I accidentally labeled that. So yeah, this model's looking pretty good. Got some sharks here that I can add. And yeah, so I can go through and let's just go ahead and, and go through the rest of this data set, label the things that our model missed and I'll show you how to train a new model.
And there we have it. If I come back to my data set, you can see that all of my images are annotated. I can go and I can look at my training validation and test set uh, and see that they're all annotated. And then we can go ahead and create a new version. So here's where I select my pre-processing, augmentation, and generation settings. Uh, I'm not gonna do any of that. Uh, let's just ex resize them and export them as is. So you can see, uh, let's say raw for this, this data set version name. Uh, and then you can see I get some options. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new training run and I'm gonna actually start from that same model uh, that I used for Label Assist. And so by doing this, I'm starting from uh, those predictions as the, the checkpoint, and I'm just gonna be teaching the model the new things that I labeled. Um, so if I go ahead and start training, then in a few minutes, I'll get back a new model. Uh, and I'm gonna go and grab a coffee, and I will come back and show you the results from that model. Okay, so it's been about a half hour, and our model's finished training. Uh, we can see that our results are quite good. The mean average precision is 95.7% on the test set. We should actually expect that because uh, our test set was extracted from the same video as our training and validation set. But uh, our goal here was just to get a cool visualization of those fish swimming across uh, that original video. And so that's just fine for our purposes because we're going to be doing inference on that same video just at a higher frame rate. Um, so to use the model, uh, all I need is the model ID, uh, and then we're going to follow the same steps that we used in last week's video, and we're going to call dot slash infer dot sh, which is the open source, uh, RoboFlow video inference script, uh, that you can grab from our GitHub. I'll paste in that model ID, uh, and then I want the input video, which is that same one that we used at the beginning, and I'll call the output fish dot mov. Uh, I'm going to do parallel 50 uh, to kick off 50 images at a time. Uh, and that's going to go through, do inference on the cloud. That's going to auto scale up uh, the, once it extracts these frames, it's going to auto scale up that model. Predict on 50 images at a time, uh, output the results, uh, and then download them back to my computer to uh, recompose them back into a video. So there we've got all the video inference done. Uh, and we're just compositing the, the final output, uh, and then we'll take a look and see how our model did. Um, from that mean average precision number, we should expect that it'll look pretty good, uh, but I'm excited to see it for the first time here. Uh, it should just take a couple more seconds, and it looks like it's done, so let's open fish.mov, and here we've got our output video. So if I hit play, uh, we can see that our sharks are getting identified, our fish are swimming across. Model looks pretty good, as we would expect. So there it was. We uh, input a uh, video, we sliced it into frames, we annotated it, and we trained a model uh, from our existing checkpoint and used it to output a uh, video inference on that original video that came in. Really excited to see what you all build with RoboFlow Video Inference. Uh, we've seen people do everything from person tracking to car tracking, uh, even checking out uh, some analytics of how skateboarders are using their local skate park. So uh, be sure to let us know if you, you build something cool. And until next time, have a good one.